we can't see the game yet. Hang on. Let's try 731. Let's go for it. All right. I'm going to call the October 10th, uh, 2023 Pleasant Ridge City Commission meeting to order. Uh, may we stand for the pleasant, uh, for the <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance, please. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have roll call? Commissioner Budnick? Here. Commissioner Lenko? Here. Commissioner Perry? Commissioner Schmier? Here. <laughs> Mayor Scott? Here. All right, well, we're going to start with something really fun, uh, our beautification of the awards for the evening. Do we have a... Some, to turn it over to Don Daniels. Good, yeah. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. Good evening, my name is Don Daniels, and on behalf of the Beautification Committee, I'm delighted to oversee this evening's recognition, and I join with them to celebrate these four homeowners and their accomplishments with the fine work on their homes. Before I get to the presentation, it is important for me to acknowledge it with gratitude the work of the Beautification Committee, whose members include Amy Bowering, Jennifer Kuber, Cheryl Laidlaw, Norma Melton, Katie Schmier, and Amanda Wall. Special thanks also to Jim, Kirsten, and Tim for your help and support as always. Appreciate that. This is a miracle. I think last year I missed one. <laughs> so the role of this committee is to discern and select Pleasant Ridge homeowners who have invested their time and talents to enhance the aesthetics of their homes. As you can see, by the map, the city is divided into seven zones, and each committee member selects two potential recipients. The committee then reconvenes, takes bribes, oops, just <laughs> <laughs> whittles that list oh, down to four, yeah, down to four homeowners. Each of these recipients will receive a beautiful Mar Marsha Hovland design tile, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner, commissioned especially for this recognition. They'll also receive signage acknowledging acknowledging this achievement. Now to the recognition. 78 Woodward Heights, Sean O'Connor. So this thoughtfully designed home at 78 Woodward Heights is a testament to the idea that greatness can indeed come in small packages. Its beautiful natural color palette envelops both the home and front garden, working in perfect harmony to create a captivating aesthetic. Every detail has been carefully chosen to maximize the home's charm from the ornate front door to the ornamental grain, rain gutter. The true star of the show, however, is the perennial garden bed, which graces the front yard with a diverse array of green shades. This lush and vibrant garden bed serves as a welcoming and inviting introduction to the home. This home is a true gem filled with immense charm and thoughtful divine, design. Sorry. I invite Sean up to receive his tile and say a few words if he wishes. Thank you. <laughs> so, for the record, I live at 78 Woodward Heights, and that's across the street, 77. Oh, but that is the right house. <laughs> the right house, wrong number. It's, it's OK. No, no, I appreciate all the kind words. It was super nice of you. So I did. I have a before picture in my phone if anyone wants to see it. It looked like the Freddy Krueger house. <laughs> <laughs> With that, thank you so much for the recognition. I love my little house. It's, I call it the little gem, so thank you for that. Oh. And um, I wanted to keep a little cottage style, but I was the designer and, and the contractor, so I, I picked out everything. And then I did the design in the front garden, and that's an S underneath the weeping red bud. However, it's not for Michigan State, it's for Sean. <laughs> but I love Pleasant Ridge. If you, I bought two t-shirts. <laughs> I love it. Oh, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it. Oh, if you go over my houses, is the third house before the old liquor store. <laughs> so your every, on your afternoon when you're going to Urban Rest. Thank you so much. Is this, question, is this the same as the little sign in our front yard, almost? Yeah. And oh, it's super, cool? yeah, super cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> And thank you, Jim, for fixing the, uh, the, the um, address so, so quickly. 
So, 42 Ridge Road, Robert Campbell and Don Daniels. Hmm. Located at 42 Ridge Road, <laughs> this striking residence excused timeless elegance following a meticulous restoration to embrace its mid-century style. The exterior combines classic brick with sleek black vertical siding, creating a stunning visual contrast that immediately captures attention. The newly landscaped grounds mirror the clean lines of modern aesthetics and surround the home in an understated yet captivating manner. The simplicity of the landscaping reflects the essence of modern design, perfectly complementing the newly installed landscaping elements. Every inch of the exterior has been thoughtfully crafted, creating a harmonious, harmonious blend of natural elements and architectural precision. I invite Robert up to receive our time. <laughs> That does look like a bribe, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I just yes. say something that we all were we all were on the same page with giving you this award. It's so a, Don was like, this is gonna look I was like, we were like, no, this house looks fantastic. It's beautiful. Oh uh, thank you. Appreciate it. In years past, you know, I've joked with Jim about waiving uh, our taxes for a year as an award this, <laughs> this year more than ever, especially, especially right. since they're not in Homestead, but I move on. <laughs> 46 Kensington Boulevard, Mary and Donald Scheibel. This charming brick Tudor style home on Kensington Road immediately captures the eye with its timeless elegance. The Scheibels purchased this home in 2020 and have since managed numerous upgrades and renovations to both the interior and the exterior of the home. The well-maintained lush front lawn is a testament to the care given to this beautiful residence. Along the front facade, an inviting window box complements the leaded glass picture window, adding a touch of natural splendor to the classic architecture. Symmetrical front pots and a welcoming wreath adorn the porch, while an ornamental tree frames its side, creating a picture-perfect sense of timeless elegance. I invite Mary and Don up to receive their tile and to say a few words. Thank you. Um, Mary and I raised our family in North Rosedale Park, another wonderful community of architecture, neighbors, but, and, and a private park, but uh, Rosedale Park doesn't have Shawnee and Greg. <laughs> the, uh, when, we, when we downsized, we moved to a condo in Royal Oak, and we asked our realtor to keep an eye out for us uh, for a home, and because our children were here, we, we thought Pleasant Ridge would be an ideal location, very similar to where we raised them. And uh, we got a call, 46 Kensington's available. Well, we fell in love with it immediately, um, and uh, for me as an architect, the, the clinker brick and the masonry, particularly unique to Southeast Michigan, ubiquitous on the West Coast during the arts and crafts movement, but uh, very nice. We've, we've done a lot. We're getting close to finishing up, but uh, it's, uh, uh, we're, we're very happy to be here and uh, uh, enjoying, enjoying it very much, have great neighbors. Um, the, uh, it, it's, it's important to be transparent uh, these days, and so I must say that Mr. Daniels does know our realtor, but, uh, <laughs> the, uh, but I'm told that this was very objective and that uh, we were deserving. And thank you very much. <laughs> Again, no bribes were taken for it. <laughs> really. 27 Oakdale Boulevard, Alicia Gabor and Christian Doble. Oh, I have to do this. I forgot. I sorry. Oh, thank you. Whoops. Uh, oh, no. Okay. There we go. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Nestled discreetly along Oakdale Boulevard, this house is a true find, exuding an air of understated elegance. Your first impression is of the formal garden entryway, an inviting pathway that gives the delightful illusion of stumbling upon a hidden garden oasis. A gravel path encircles a carefully crafted landscaping element, beckoning you toward the heart of the home. Moving forward, you're welcomed by a broad, inviting porch marked by perfect symmetry. Planters grace both sides of the staircase and the front door, creating a balanced and welcoming ambiance. The design of this home reflects a thoughtful approach where every element has been carefully chosen to create a serene and private retreat. This residence is more than just a home. It's a testament to thoughtful design and careful planning, resulting in a place of quiet charm and natural beauty. I invite 
Alicia and Christian to step up to receive their title and say a few, few words. Well, thank you. I, Alicia is going to stay seating. <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for uh, for the award and uh, and honoring us. Uh, we have put a lot of a lot of time, a lot of heart into uh, restoring this house. We found this house ten years ago. I think it was about ten years mm -hmm. ago. We actually wrote a letter uh, to the owner in hopes that it could be a house that we could fix up. It was in in a lot of need of work. The original porch had fallen off of it uh, and the siding Sorry, was asbestos and there was a lot of issues the front yard was mostly sand so we decided that it would be a good project for us we never heard back from the letter that we sent but uh, the house went up for sale the very next day so it just <laughs> <laughs> happened to be uh, well meant to be so we purchased the house and from there we put in uh, a lot of uh, sweat into the house on the inside and the outside the exterior was the last thing we did so we actually wrapped up the exterior the landscape and the outside of the house about six years ago now and we've been just trimming it and keeping it maintained and loving it uh, I have to say you know seeing the other homes and being uh, at this spot and seeing the three before us it's this was the reason that we bought in the community uh actually ann perry who isn't here uh originally inspired me to move to this community when she first bought her house and worked on it and fixed it up it was such a charming craftsman and that had become a dream of mine so this was something that bringing a house back to its original splendor um and helping the neighborhood stay the way that we liked it was a big part of our inspiration. So I think that is our inspiration, our neighbors and all the houses that we love so much and glad to be part of that honor. So thank you, appreciate it. Well, thank, thank you. you. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. And so now you're gonna see everybody in the community popping their heads through that front uh, <laughs> entranceway. I'm sure that you're used to that, of course. So the beautification committee, along with our entire community, hope these homeowners accept this recognition as a testament to their commitment of improving the overall aesthetic, not only of their homes, but of our entire city. Thank you for investing in this community we all love. <laughs> so. I invite all of the homeowners to step forward for a well-deserved photo op, along with our commissioners and our com committee members. So please come on up. Come on, come stand up here. Thank you. <laughs> my, my favorite part about my, my redo was that I inspired all my neighbors to do theirs. There you go, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're so happy. I'm glad to hear that. There you go. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Oh my goodness. Hey, everybody's got to be in. Do you want to get in? Yeah, it's totally okay. It's totally okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 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 Good to see hey, you. Amanda, we want to jump. Oh my God, this is part of the Imperial Day. Are you guys staying for one day? Funny. Yeah. And, and uh, while we have a moment, I'll just suggest to everyone watching, uh, if you've not taken a chance to just drive through Pleasant Ridge over the last year, so many people have done work to their homes, it's amazing. So um, these are four of the finest examples, but there's a lot of houses that did great work this year. So uh, take a moment to drive around. We're fortunate to be a small city, so it doesn't take much to take a bike along 26th Street or take a walk and see what's there. Yeah.
Okay. Yeah. 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 I know. Congratulations. Thank you, guys. Oh, no worries. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, with that, we will move on to uh, public discussion items that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Hello, I'm Ted Zachary, 68 Devonshire. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Commission, staff, viewers. Uh, just want to do a, a couple of things. Uh, just a reminder about the Roundup issue that I mentioned last time. Uh, one. If we don't use Roundup, there's less likely of a child or adult animal uh, getting cancer. Number two, I'm afraid that if somebody does get cancer, then the city might be liable for it. That's, that's what I want to say about that. Okay. Um, another suggestion that I have is about beautification is um, uh, trees I would, and noise. I feel that... Um, the noise level in Pleasant Ridge could be a little bit lower if we have taller trees, like evergreen trees, so it would be less noise summer and winter and fall, spring. So uh, that's just an idea. Um, I'm sure you're going to investigate it and see if it's possible or worthwhile or what's the word, economically, uh, whatever, what was that word? Sound? Economically, oh, sound would work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Solid. yeah. But it, it's something for the future. We, pro you know, it could be trees, could be ivy, or both, on the wall. And I think if it's ivy, it's less likely that the wall would be deteriorating from the uh, expansion and contraction of the sun heat and stuff like that. It would last longer. It's just that more economically sound. Um, the last thing is about um, uh, beautification, actually. A lot of times we try to make the uh, home beautiful so that we have perhaps an award. And as some people use a thing that I'm going to show you, it's my visual aid for today. <clears throat> and you, you see this and say, oh, this is nice. It makes the house look nice and stuff like that. But unfortunately, uh, it, it just plain gets thrown out at the curb. I got this one here at the curb. Still beautiful. It's about a, three weeks now. Uh, the reason why I bring this up is because there's dirt in here. We have to pay for this dirt to be transported either to the dump or, if we're lucky, to, to get recycled for the uh, compost. Uh, I like to say keep it at home. Just put this in your garden, take the dirt out, and it's used. Mm -hmm. You save all kinds of money. If you buy dirt, I think it's around $8 a bag. It's unbelievable. And this is probably half a bag. So that's mainly that's what I want to say. Thank you very much. Any, you. any questions? Uh, any questions from anyone? Yeah. No? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's a good idea to look into having tr trees really lined up to decrease the noise. Mm -hmm. And it won't, we won't see it right away. It'll be maybe 15 years from now, really. Mm -hmm. More people, it'll be more of a city. We're taking care of ourselves. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ted. Thank, thank you, Ted. Ted. <laughs> All right, well, we'll move on to our liaison reports. So. <clears throat> Commissioner Schmier for the Historical Commission. Historical. Um, so I wanted to just start by um, thanking everyone for the success of the Home and Garden Tour, which was two weeks ago, um, three weeks ago maybe. Number one, the houses were all beautiful. Um, so thank you for everyone who let people into their house. I mean, we couldn't do it without the volunteers coming forward and sharing their homes, and they were really spectacular. Um, and the Historical uh, Commission did a really great job of putting it together, um, which they always do, but it was great. Uh, and then to all the volunteers. So it was just a great event. So thank you. And for everyone who couldn't make it this year, we might be doing one next year, if not next year, the year after. 
Um, other than that, Historical Museum will be open on, what day are we looking at? The 21st, 10 until 12. Um, and if you haven't bought your Then and Now book, um, I know Anne was actually selling them at the Fall Fest, but you can always buy them at City Hall. You can always come to the museum to buy them also. And I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Katie? All right, we'll move on to Commissioner Budnick with the uh, Recreation Commi Committee. Commission. <laughs> I'm out of words today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. <laughs> well, I have plenty of words to, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to follow. October Rec Happenings starts off with Movies of the Month, and they're shown every Thursday, every third Thursday, excuse me, and this one for October is coming up on the 19th at 12 p.m. There are two showings, 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. It's Jules, and that's rated PG-13. Next up is a classic sing-along, which is on Thursday, November 2nd at 6.30 p.m. at the Community Center. Join David Osher and friends for a live music. It's a pop rock performance with lyrics up on the big screen so you can sing along. Adults only for this one, please. Halloween trick-or-treating, Tuesday, October 31st. Big surprise, 5 to 7.30. Recommended hours for trick-or-treating are the 5 to 7.30 time frame, and homeowners who plan to pass out candy are urged to turn on their porch lights. The community center will be open for parking, restrooms, a drinking fountain, and passing out candy as well, which is mm. super Fantastic. neat. Yeah. Adult exercise class to work off all that Halloween candy. <laughs> the registration is open. Check the Ridger or online for start dates for yoga, sit and get fit, and Zumba classes. Furthermore, we have the Huntington Woods Library, um, the PR book drop, return library books right in in Pleasant Ridge. So the new book drop inside the pool entrance at the PR Community Center. Um, you may return books from any library, but please no donations there. And Deb isn't here this evening, so I think that wraps up that part. And some big news, please support the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. The Halloween candy collection will happen at the PR Community Center until Thursday, November the 2nd. So donation bins will be located inside the poolside lobby. So that's the lobby to the left facing the community center. And two last items, coats for the cold will be collected at the community center and at City Hall November 1st all the way through the 25th. So looking for new or gently used coats of all sizes for all the seasons. And on a last note, uh, the the side deals or the back-ended deals keep going on. Thank you to Robert Campbell, <laughs> <laughs> Brylar, and Oakland County Parks for sponsoring the Fall Fest and Hayride this weekend. I was there. It was great. And uh, Don and Robert were, of course, there with their usual cider donuts. And uh, Shawnee, thanks for a great event. That was fantastic. That is, it's always a fantastic yeah. event. Yeah. Very well attended. And just, just for size purpose, um, Robert and Don gave away... 40 dozen donuts Jeez. and 20 gallons of cider. Oh, my so, goodness. Mm -hmm. awesome. That kind of speaks of the magnitude of their generosity and yeah. as well as the participation for the community. It's a great turnout. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think one child had 10. <laughs> 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 yeah, of course, I, mean, I can know. believe it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, any questions for Chris? Maybe offline, but I'm, I'm curious about candy consumption and, and volumes. I've seen a couple posts about how much candy to buy, and I guess the answer would be err on the side of caution because we have the, the police uh, donation right. on the right. other end of it if, if, if you overbuy, let's say. No but candy will go to waste. Yes. Pleasant Ridge is a heavy trick-or-treat city, right? Right. So yeah. stock up. And Gene Foreman, he's always a huge help. He does his little, like, raffle, I guess. So he'll probably do that uh, little bit thing online that he normally does, like, guess the weight. And we'll donate a shirt or team towel or something to the winner. So awesome. I think awesome. it was 583 pounds last year. Good yeah. donate. Yeah. It was Every a year we've gone it's up. Yep. Yeah. Wow. So it, Greg and I take it all to the county. So <laughs> bring <laughs> ours. That's awesome. My teeth are hurting. Yeah, right. Just thinking about it. Oh, one last thing, oh, Mayor. Sure. Uh, Rec Commission does meet end of this month, Wednesday, October 25th, if anyone is so inclined to come join us. All right, on to Ferndale Public Schools and Commissioner Lenko. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two quick updates out of the school in addition to the normal plug. Uh, sign up for the e-blast and watch the uh, Ferndale School Board videos online if you're so interested. But the two key uh, updates this week are parent-teacher conferences are, are commencing, so depends by the school. Um, but I would check with 
with your individual school. I'm sure your children have brought home communications about this. Uh, but over the next week will be parent-teacher conferences, and it's encouraged that parents are involved that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then homecoming is this Friday. So uh, oh, cool. 4.30 is the parade at 9 in Planavon. Uh, 5 to 7 is the tailgate at the Ferndale High School parking lot. Uh, and then kickoff at 7 against Groves. So fly high, Eagles. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any questions for Alex? All right. Uh, and then on the planning, did you have some notes from Ann, or is there anything in particular? I think we just had a meeting date. Uh, yeah, nothing specific. Uh, we're going to be talking about some RFPs. There we go. We'll later on the agenda. All right. Uh, we'll move on to governmental reports. Police? Let's look at the corner, like where the axe are in place is. I think I'm the only one here. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Hi, Chief. Good evening. Uh, Commissioner Budnick touched on most of the Halloween trick-or-treating um, information, stealing a little bit of the thunder. I'll elaborate a little bit. Um, if you have younger children, we encourage an adult to walk with younger children or whatever. And if it's possible, I know with costumes is difficult with what they want to wear, but some sort of reflective uh, clothing or a flashlight or the glow stick thing we encourage. Uh, crossing at streets corners not running across the street Pleasant Ridge typically gets a lot of non-resident trick-or-treaters like Commissioner Lenko alluded to um, many of them which we have extra officers on patrol and we discourage them driving along we encourage them to park in one of the lots whether it's at the school the, the recreation building or here at City Hall and walk with your child but Many of these people that are coming are not going to watch this meeting or whatever, so our residents typically know, but mm -hmm. just to remind them. Um, and again, Sean wanted me to remind that the community center is open for bathrooms and candy passing out and stuff like that. Crime-wise, we've, again, knock on wood, um, not experiencing a lot of crime. We had a couple larceny from vehicles in September, again, unlocked. So again, lock your doors at night it's a habit i know that i have that i encourage everybody to do before you go to bed at night check your doors if they're locked hit the key fob lock your car doors encourage extra lighting if you have and then video doorbells help us a lot with recognizing criminals or things like that um, that's really all i have thank you thanks chief thank, thank you questions. thank you thanks happy halloween <laughs> yes happy halloween <laughs> All right, um, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, um, all that we really have on this one are things that we would just normally approve. So maybe we have a motion. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Any conversation? Let's take a vote. Commissioner Lankford? Yes. Commissioner Budnick? Yes. Commissioner Schneer? Yes. Mayor Scott? Yes, uh, the motion carries. And now we'll move on to the Woodward Heights traffic calming bid. Jim? Yes, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, we put the uh, Woodward Heights traffic calming implementation project out to bid. Uh, it requires a fairly significant amount of work, even though it is an interim measure. Um, it's paint and plastic bollards uh, for the short run. Uh, we'll assess how the... Um, how it's working, if there's any changes that need to be made. And then there's a, also a long-term implementation plan that requires more concrete work um, that's more involved and will be more expensive. So as we gain some experience with how this is working and can adjust the long-term plan and pursue grants for mm -hmm. implementation of the long-term measure. Uh, we received one uh, response to the request for bids and that was from PK Contracting Incorporated. Um, they're a little bit of a monopoly when it comes to this kind of work in the region. Um, mm -hmm. They do everything from local agencies to MDOT. They are the subcontractor for lane markings and um, this type of work for everybody everywhere. So we're in the process of getting the contract books approved uh, and getting the project ready to go. It's still our hope to get this in before winter. Um, so we'll see. But uh, the uh, recommendation is to award the bid for the Woodward Heights traffic calming project to PK Contracting for the total amount of $58,125.25. And the one thing I did not mention is we're also including refreshing the edge stripes along Indiana and Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, those are looking a little faded, mm -hmm. so we'll 
we'll get those. Um, it's hard to get BK contracting into town because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're very busy. So while they're here. Why not do it? Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Cool. Any questions for Jim? Just one of the things I noticed, like in the RFPs in general, uh, in, in this, that we have a cost not to exceed, but perhaps given the inflationary uh, environment we're in, we ask them to explain how they control costs. I don't want to, you know, put a fork in the wheel or anything like that. So I, I support the idea, but just kind of as a clause to include in RFPs and these types of things, um, ask the supplier to document at least what they do to control costs. So to, to um, I guess, to what end? Because this is a one price, they're going to do the work for the price they quote us. Um, I don't, do we care how they control long-term prices or what's the goal with that? Yeah, the goal is, I mean, because projects oftentimes do not come in under the budget. Sometimes they go over and there's scope creep. So part of this would be to understand what they're doing to manage their costs and deliver the services on budget. Okay. Well, I can tell you that for a project like this, there won't be any scope creep or increased cost. Um, they quote it and they do it for that. And that's how all of our construction projects typically work, um, this one especially. So I, I would say that's not a concern for this type of project um, for a longer term contractual relationship. But even then, our standard contracts have either a defined inflationary measure in there where, you know, that's it. That's all you get. Uh, we don't see a lot of change orders. We don't see a lot of um, that. I know on some, you know, construction mm -hmm. projects for building a building or something like that, that's common. Um, but for us, we, um, our sewer projects, our road construction projects, we have very few of those. And if we do, it's because we've asked them to do extra things or different things outside of what was initially bid. But for this, for our construction projects, it's a, it's a bid price. They give us the price. Once the contract book is done, they're doing it for that price. Mm -hmm. And from what I've seen, if there is cost creep, it is actually before we award the business. We set out to get a grant or something, and then by the time all of the paperwork mm -hmm. is in, the price isn't what it was when we yes. started the process. That is exactly where we see the impact of inflation or cost mm -hmm. increases. Is at, you know the, the lag time between our scoping of the project and our bidding of the project. Mm -hmm. So that's usually where we see when they come in higher than we expected them to, it's usually for, for those reasons. Mm -hmm. Right, and in this case too, if it's a monopoly, for lack of a better word, yeah, yeah you don't have as much leverage to, so, okay. Right. Exactly, sure. exactly. But once we sign the contract for 58,000, 125, 25, that's- That's the price. That's the maximum we're paying. Okay. Anything else? I'm comfortable. All right, let's yeah, take yeah. a vote. Oh, actually, I guess motion. we need a motion first, <laughs> don't we? <laughs> Uh, Mayor, I move to award the bid for the Woodward Heights Traffic Calming Project to PK Contracting, Inc. for an amount not to exceed $58,125.25. Do we have a second? Second. All right. May we take a vote? Commissioner Budnick? Yes. Commissioner Schmier? Yes. Commissioner Lenko? Yes. Mayor Scott? Yes. The motion carries. And Mayor? Yes, Mayor, please. I, I, on Commissioner Lenko's last comment, the... I think the curiosity and the question of how we control costs, just having Jim explain that is sometimes helpful for residents to hear just that it's an interest and in, Jim does have that at our, at, you know, is certainly looking at that as an aspect of mm -hmm. what we're doing. And I, I think that curiosity is helpful just so it is transparent and people, mm -hmm. our residents and neighbors do understand that that is something definitely on mind. So. Right, right. All right, on to item 11 around uh, the art plan. Yes, well, there's two parts to this. Um, so we have two RFPs that are fairly significant, and these are requests for professional services. Uh, one for a new comprehensive community plan and one for a public art framework plan. Uh, the comprehensive plan is, uh, it incorporates three major parts. Um, the uh, first and most important part being the community master plan. Uh, we've discussed this with the Planning Commission, and we've had some discussions at the City Commission level. And our, uh, our master plan is 10 years old now. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot has changed in the world in Pleasant Ridge in the last 10 years. Uh, we know property values have increased uh, by a large amount. There's some different pressures that exist in the world. Um, you know, this was a pre-COVID world where work from home wasn't much of a thing. And now, you know, it is. Um, everywhere is getting older. 
property values are higher, traffic is more, you know, all of these things have happened in the last 10 years. So uh, I think it's time that we go out and um, take another look at a master plan that's, you know, reflecting the new realities. Mm -hmm. We also, uh, ha it's time to do a parks and recreation master plan. Um, the, our five-year parks and rec plan is expiring soon, and uh, we've completed the major recommendations from the one we did five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, from that plan, the two major recommendations were the pavilions, one at the pool and then Gainsborough Park, mm -hmm. um, and then there were some, um, also some other projects that we completed as well, uh, which escaped my mind at this point, but we could <laughs> easily go back and look at the plan yeah. and identify what those were. Uh, so it's time to come up with that. We know that we have some new recreation needs. Um, we had a community survey, which closed yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, one item that came up quite a bit was pickleball. It did. Yeah. It did. So, uh, but also on, you know, kind of both sides of the ledger. Yeah. So uh, we'll have to explore. So that's an example of something we should probably be looking at um, mm -hmm. during the Parks and Rec Master Plan. Mm -hmm. So we'll have more information from the community survey for you at next month's meeting. Uh, former Mayor Metzger. Uh, our data guru uh, for in, in town is is crunching the numbers and putting together some results from that survey now. Um, and I think we had, well, and I checked on Sunday, we had over 850 people that had responded. We ended up with 870 responses. That's awesome. That's yeah. amazing. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That level of, you know, of response yeah. rate, it's over 30%. Right. Easily. Well, so that's how many were eligible, though? You know, like the census is 26, 26 mm -hmm. or 25, mm -hmm. but how many kids? You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> Penetration is probably higher is what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. So yes. Half of adults, I think. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, and actually, the preliminary results are, are available. Mm -hmm. I'll take a sidebar. Uh, cityofpleasantridge.org slash survey mm -hmm. will take you now to a place where you can see the, nice. basically the raw results. Oh, cool. So uh, Kurt is slicing and dice, doing the cross tabs and some analysis of those numbers. But if you want to see all the raw uh, responses, they're there. Okay. Um, and then the third part of the comprehensive plan uh, will be a, a transportation plan. Just again, taking a look at, you know, we, Woodward is going to be coming online. That's yeah, going to be finished uh, this fall. And we've done some other work on transportation uh, you know, th issues throughout town. Mm -hmm. We know that keeps coming up, traffic and, and traffic calming and increased traffic everywhere in the area. So um, that will be the third uh, leg of the stool for the comprehensive community plan. Mm -hmm. So land use, parks and recreation, and then transportation. The Planning Commission has reviewed the uh, scope of work for that, which is included in the RFP, and, uh, which is in the City Commission packet. Mm -hmm. um, so they've reviewed that uh, at least a couple times, um, commented on it, and helped develop that. The other part of this is the Public Art Framework Plan. Um, as you know, we recently seated the Arts Council, and they've met twice. Mm -hmm. uh, at the first meeting, we had some really good discussions about, you know, we're here for the first time. This is the Arts Council's first meeting. We're just getting started. What do you want to do? Um, so there's some really good discussion that we had. And uh, the Arts Council, as they were discussing, congealed around the idea that before we do anything, we should probably figure out where we're trying to go or what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and we know there's some a couple short-term needs which we've identified. Um, we have a high demand for memorial items. People want to buy a memorial bench or a tree uh, in the city. And quite frankly, we're out of benches. And mm -hmm. trees are, um, you know, it's you can find a spot for some of them, but it's getting harder to find appropriately located trees. So the idea of creating a meaningful um, memorial monument where people can place names and remembrances. Uh, but that also has intrinsic artistic merit mm -hmm. that has value beyond just being a memorial. That is something that um, enhances place, that uh, brings value to the entire community in addition to being a memorial. Um, that was one of the kind of broad strokes of that discussion. So, um, and that could encompass landscaping. It could encompass um, site design in, a, in addition to the memorial itself. So that's just uh, a, a small kind of summary of the discussion that we had um, about the public art framework plan. So it'd be looking specifically at the memorial element, more broadly at where should public art go? You know, mm -hmm. Sculptures, murals, paintings, um, how you do other displays of public art outdoors, like the DIA's Inside Out program, but how could we do our own with photography or art or things that we produce and display on our own here in town and in some of our public spaces? Um, and then also we have indoor spaces and how do we activate those and what do we do with them? So mm -hmm. there's a lot of, you know, questions and making sure that, what, you know, we're looking at 
the, the whole cloth of the community. And as we incrementally build this out, that it gets us to the broader vision that we've established with the community mm -hmm. um, to help guide us. And then the uh, final piece of that discussion, which came out um, really from that discussion, hadn't really been thought of before, was can we improve gateways or imaging Pleasant Ridge as you enter it to I, reinforce kind of that sense of arrival or that sense of place here? Mm -hmm. um, and how, you know, what can we do to make that better? And I don't know what that looks like. Nobody does yet, but that's something that they, the Arts Council would like to explore as part of this public art plan. Mm -hmm. um, and we also discussed that we would like to do a charrette process for this. Mm. Um, and those of you who are here will recall that we used a charrette process for Gainsborough Park mm -hmm. back in 2015. Um, and a charrette is a uh, process where it's very concentrated in time. You get a consultant team, and then they come and they basically live here for three, four, five days a week. They, they're here the whole time. Um, and they incorporate focus groups, public meetings, focus groups of stakeholders, public meetings, um, studio time for the design team to test ideas, to sketch out ideas, to respond to what they've heard from the public, further meetings to it's really iterative mm -hmm. um, in a very quick uh, time frame. So people can get engaged and stay engaged. And it really builds a lot of interest and excitement because it's fast. You know, you come to a meeting on Tuesday and have preliminary discussions with the project team about, you know, broad kind of concepts. And then on Wednesday, they've worked out and drawn out a bunch of things and you start to refine them. And what we saw with Gainsborough Park with that process, and I've seen this through other shreds I've been involved with in previous professional lives, you usually end up with a plan that people are really excited about mm -hmm. uh, because it happens quickly and there's no lag in and time. Buy -in. It's like and there's buy-in. And there's immediate yeah. buy-in and excitement for, yeah. you know, let's get, let's get going on this. So projects like Gainsborough Park or a public art framework plan are really perfect for a charrette because it's focused around, you know, one area or, you know, one thing that we're doing in our parks. So it's easy to, not easy, but it's, it's conducive to really focusing in and, and coming up with a good, good plan for that. Mm -hmm. So that was the first step that the Arts Council wants to take to be intentional about this before they start, you know, really spending money and looking at implementation. Um, so, you know, give themselves a good guide for that. Mm -hmm. So it was a pretty long explanation for that, <laughs> but that RFP was also mm -hmm. reviewed. Um, so between the first and second Arts Council meetings, we wrote up the RFP, uh, reviewed the scope of work with the Arts Council. They, again, reviewed that, refined it in a number of ways, um, and then it's been packaged um, for your review. Uh, I will say the Arts Council uh, is, the, is being funded by the Pleasant Ridge Foundation, so they've, the foundation has uh, transferred the money from the auction to the city. So oh, nice. Yeah, those are available, and that will help go towards funding the, the charrette process, mm -hmm. um, along with the marijuana excise tax money that the city receives. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions or comments you have on the RFPs. Um, next steps would be to release these, and then we'd go through the selection process, um, again, to um, I identify consultants and um, likely do interviews. And we'd look to be doing that over the winter time to start these projects uh, next spring. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It was interesting. I remember our discussion about electronic signage along Woodward that I think it was MDOT or someone had <coughs> wanted to do. And yeah. this is the exact opposite right. of that. This is something <laughs> that is desired, pretty, and mm -hmm. you know, um, speaks well for the city. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious to see what comes out of that and all the projects. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Is there any uh, <coughs> thoughts or questions to add? No questions. I yeah, yeah, I was excited, yeah. especially reading the public art framework plan. I was, mm -hmm. it was, I was excited to read it, and I was, yeah, I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for all of it. Yeah, and I like the idea of the focus, the intentional focus, uh, the charrette mm -hmm. process, yeah. and having kind of the memorial and the the entry ways into the city identified. That's like, it's good to have it kind of framed out that way before we have the consultants in. So it'll be very productive that way. And my mind went to like those Woodward sculptures, you know, like Ferndale has one, Highland Park, they're up Pontiac. Like, not that we would spread them out like that or they'd be concrete pile, but yeah, like some, some something that marks the city where you know you're entering or leaving or you're on Woodward, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So that continuity is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be, it can be 
built art, it could be really great landscaping. Could be. Right. Mm. You know, one of the things that the Arts Council talked about was, and I forget his name, mm. but, you know, there's a lot of landscape architects mm -hmm. who have done things. You know, we have the, the garden that's on Belle Isle. Um, there's one in Philadelphia that was similar. So that could be something. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, uh, art, is, art is art, and, you know, you can't really put it in too narrow of, a, of guardrails. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see where it goes. Yeah. And it sounds like the members of the council are actually really enthusiastic and, and just happy to be on the council. So that's great, too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think we're moving on then to <coughs> item 12, which is our uh, early election services agreement. I think my thing is not as exciting, maybe. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, so with the passage of Proposal 22-2, early voting is now a requirement in the state constitution. Uh, but Oakland County is taking the lead in most of the facilitation of the early voting sites in the county, uh, along with purchasing any of the necessary equipment, training of election workers, et cetera. Um, the local communities are responsible for the cost of staffing and public notifications, along with the joint administration of the early voting site when open. There are financial incentives to communities for signing a joint agreement, including the county picking up the cost of equipment through a state grant accessible to county governments. Uh, this level of funding is not available to communities that have a standalone early voting site. So we are um, joining with Huntington Woods, Berkeley, and Oak Park um, for early voting site at the Oak Park Community Center. Um, this location works out because um, it's conveniently located, it has adequate parking, it's handicap accessible, and it's available. Um, as a dedicated location because we have to be able to lock everything up every night it can't be used in between for anything so obviously we don't want it at our rec center while we have camp and things going on um, there's an additional location at uh, waterford oaks activity center which is run by the Co oakland county also that anybody in oakland county can go to and vote um, the early voting will be for nine days beginning the second saturday prior to each election um, from 8 30 a.m to 4 30 p.m except Thursday, and we'll do Thursdays from noon to 8, just to give people some extra flexibility. Mm. Um, the alternative to that would be that we just handle all the early voting ourselves um, for every election going forward. <laughs> so there are significant drawbacks to that approach, including occupying the community center for at least nine days before each election, which would preclude its use for rentals, events, city programming, camp. Um, and we would also bear the cost and responsibility of providing all election equipment and staffing. Um, for the nine additional days. So, um, yeah, we would just like, we would just like consideration of the uh, attached election services agreement with Oakland County to provide the early voting services for the city of Pleasant Ridge uh, and to designate Oak Park Community Center as our early voting regional site. Told you it wasn't as exciting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, any questions for uh, Kirsten? Nice job. Yeah, yeah, yeah very nice. And regional collaboration's exciting to me. <laughs> good. Uh, really, very good for the cost savings. This is a good right. Yeah, it's exactly. Very good. Right. This, this is one of those instances where everyone wanted something and they was like, "Oh, it happened." Uh -huh. And how do we actually do this? Because yes. just imagine every city needing to find nine days of volunteers mm -hmm. um, right. all day. An accessible location. An accessible location that you can give up for that amount of time. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful thing to make um, elections and voting more accessible, but then it was like, oh, how do we do this? Right. <laughs> this is, and it, the, the goals are absolutely uh, worthy. Yes. The, uh, the ballot initiative, they didn't consult clerks exactly. when, it came, when they wrote the ballot initiative and how this all works. So Michigan, Kirsten's dealing with a lot <laughs> in her mm -hmm. first, you know, uh, being in charge of her first election because all the rules have changed. Right. So a lot of states have early voting. A lot of states have no reason absentee voting. A lot of states have permanent absentee ballot uh, voter lists. Uh, I think Michigan's the only state that has all of those. Mm -hmm. So and it's all changing, and so there's just a lot of details to be worked through that the state, that the county, that the local clerks are all struggling with to to get those in place. The other thing that's, I think, important to note is that Oakland County with the early voting sites, we're not required to do the early voting sites for this election. Technically, it's not until the presidential primary mm -hmm. um, over the winter. Uh, but Oakland County, we're, we're still doing it 
just as a shakedown, just to sure. get experience, to mm -hmm. you know, go through the process mm -hmm. as soon as possible. So um, I, hats off to clerks. Hats off to yeah. clerks, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> She's speechless. Right. I know. I know. <laughs> look, look. There's a lot of me asking questions, and I'm going, "Oh, we'll let you know as soon as we know." Yeah, yeah. And they're figuring it out while, while we do. So the sure. state, the county, and us are all kind of uh, figuring out together. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, may we have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve the attached election services agreement with Oakland County to provide early voting services for the City of Pleasant Ridge and to designate the Oak Park Community Center at 14200 Oak Park Boulevard as the early voting regional site for the cities of Pleasant Ridge, uh, Berkeley, Oak Park, and Huntington Woods. Second. Any last thoughts? All right, let's have a vote. Commissioner Schmier? Yes. Commissioner Lenko? Yes. Commissioner Budnick? Yes. Mayor Scott? Yes, the motion carries. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, on to item 13, Oakland County assessing contract renewal. Yes. Um, we put the, all of the cool stuff in the back end. Yeah, we really did. We figured if anyone stuck around, they might. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Give them something decent to listen Retired, to. But. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we have an, a, a contract with Oakland County Equalization to provide our property assessing services and have for decades. Um, the current agreement uh, expired June 30th. Uh, the pro, pro's contract for your consideration will become effective or retroactive to July uh, 1, 2023 through June 30, 2025. The contract language is the same as in previous years. Uh, there are 4% cost increases for each of fiscal year 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are spelled out in the agenda summary. Um, the total cost increase for fiscal year 24 with that 4% would be $804. So it's a fairly negligible cost. Um, assessing services are very reasonable for us as provided by Oakland County. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of benefit that comes with partnering from the county for this because they have commercial appraisers, t uh, a deep bench of residential appraisers. Mm -hmm. They provide tax tribunal uh, support uh, when we get a tax tribunal case mm -hmm. or a challenge to property taxes. Um, and for us to provide all of those on our own would be challenging. Yeah. So um, the total annual cost of this is about $22,000 now. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. And their costs have gone up 10.3% over the last five years and inflation's about 19% over that time. So again, to the inflationary right. cost, mm -hmm. Oakland County's controlled it fairly well. Mm -hmm. Great. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, the requested action is consideration of approval for the um, contract. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, we, may we have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve the attached contract with Oakland County Equalization for assessing services. Support. Any other thoughts? Uh, may we have a vote? Commissioner Schmier? Yes. Commissioner Budnick? Yes. Commissioner Lenko? Yes. Mayor Scott? Yes, the motion carries. Um, last, I almost last item, city manager's report. Yes. Uh, we got a few things. Um, Woodward Construction is coming along. Uh, I think we're at the point now where you'll start to actually see things happen. It's like building a house and you build, do the foundation in the basement and it feels like nothing's happening forever and the pile of dirt sitting mm -hmm. out front not doing anything and then all of a sudden walls are up. So I think we're at that point. Um, the uh, Pleasant Ridge Foundation has pledged to um, explore and support the uh, renovation of the kitchen at mm -hmm. Four Ridge. So we are working on that uh, behind the scenes, getting some plans and quotes together. Uh, so that's something um, that's, that's uh, I don't know, I have a date for when that'll happen because if you've done any construction project in your house lately, you know how that goes. But we're working on uh, the planning phase of that and scoping that project out. So hopefully that comes, that should be coming fairly soon. Um, it should be a good improvement for the community center, mm -hmm. um, again, with foundation support. Leaf pickup uh, it starts October 30th, beginning this year on the west side. Uh, as you know, every year we alternate. So we start on the west side one year, and then the next year we flip and start on the east side. Leaf pickup goes for five weeks, continues through the week of November 27th. Um, and then um, it, that last week, it continues until everybody's done. So if it takes 
six days and goes into the week after to finish the entire city, that's what happens. If they finish the entire city that week in four days, then we're done. Mm -hmm. um, we do Woodward Heights uh, along with the west side, and then we do Cambridge East along with the east side because those two streets, uh, for different reasons, um, have increased need for leaf pickup. Right. Um, you know, Cambridge has a ton of leaves because yes. it's the old oak forest that's there. So those really pile up. So we do that every week. And then Woodward Heights being busier and, you know, carrying a lot of on-street parking, it's good to get those leaves out of there every week as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and then, again, I uh, had the community survey written down, but we mentioned that. So, again, have a look at the results, and uh, we'll have more for you on that in November. Awesome. So happy to answer any questions that anyone else has about anything else going on around town. Oh, um, le tree removals started today. So Davey is removing street trees um, that were dead, dying, diseased, needed to go. Mm -hmm. um, so every year we do our um, inventory of trees that we think need to be looked at. Davey looks at them and uh, takes those down. And then um, Davey is our arborist. I will say that Davey has really no incentive. Sometimes people think that they come in and recommend trees to be removed because it drums up business for them. But that's not true because we have our annual true tree budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we don't, we're not removing trees, we're spending that money maintaining them mm -hmm. instead. So um, we only remove trees and Davey only removes, recommends trees be removed that, that really truly need it. Mm -hmm. So that they starts. they seem to give us really good advice about the health of trees. Yes. They really understand it. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. They're a great partner. They're one of the best contractors and have been one of the best contractors we have for 10 years. They're mm -hmm. responsive and just great partners. So that they've been really fantastic to work with. I was going to say, I know a uh, manager at Davey, like their backlog stretches months and months and months. <laughs> but like they have as much work as they need to, to put anybody's mind at ease. Like they're not looking for work. There's, there's enough Absolutely. <laughs> trees. Yeah. Yep. And you know, we, we have, we always send a letter and notice to homeowners when we're going to take their street tree down. Mm -hmm. We don't want to surprise anybody. Um, and we've had homeowners this year, we had a couple contact us about their tree and we took a second look and said, okay, you know, we can, we can let that one go for a year. We'll see how that one does for a year. So we work with homeowners, um, you know, as, as is reasonable mm -hmm. um, around that. So, um, and even uh, along the Woodward project, I mean, we've made it a point to replace any trees, actually add more trees than were there at, when something comes down. Yes, absolutely. At the, the five trees that we unfortunately really had to take down between Devonshire uh, by the Fields Art Building. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to get seven trees back in there. So we'll have more mm -hmm. than we started with. And we're planting three inch trees, which is larger than your right. typical two and a half inch tree. So they'll be a little bit bigger right off the bat. And we're irrigating. So there's gonna be irrigation for all those trees now where there wasn't in the past. And the street trees that were planted in there in the 90s, they're in the tree wells. Mm -hmm. So that really there's compacted soil all around it and they're in a well and it doesn't have a lot of access to air or water in the soil. Now all the planting strips are going to be continuous green planting strips, which will allow more air and water exchange um, for those trees. So, right. you know, it is unfortunate we've lost some, but on the whole, it's going to be a much better environment for the trees. Mm -hmm. So they should do well. Awesome. They will do well. We'll make sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, other business? Mayor. Let's see. <laughs> it's been a long day. I'm sorry. I'm a little, I'm off my game today, but I did want to mention Ridge Resale is open. Oh, that's right. Thank yep. you for reminding me. Yes, yes, yes. Ridge Resale is open this Saturday, October 14th, 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Okay. It's great. Good finds. Yes. Uh, just yeah, found yes. Stuff it was uh, at the busy on Sunday. Hay ride. Yeah. Yep. Uh, with the hayride, it was really busy in there on Sunday and all kinds of people buying stuff. Yeah, no, I love, I mean, I, every time it's open, I love browsing, so. It sounds like the old auction days, too, where there's, like, Chanel and, like, there's, like, real stuff in there. Right? <laughs> you know, like, it is. yeah, it really Fancy. is. Yeah. And there's some stuff that, like, if you were planning, um, if you are planning to attend a Halloween party and just wanted to dress up as someone, there's some really <laughs> nice clothes in there <laughs> where you could create an outfit and be somebody from a movie. It's yeah. crazy. So, um, Go. I'm, I'm wearing my shirt next time. I got a, I got a deer shirt, so, so you'll, you'll right. see it next for deer season. There you go. Um, I will also mention, for those of you that have family members that are 
a, perhaps a part of what is happening over in Israel. We, of course, our hearts are going out to you. This has just been a bizarre weekend for all of you. We, uh, we are thinking about you and your families. Um, uh, let's hope this uh, finds a, a good solution fast. And uh, with that, I think we're ready to adjourn. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.